What are loop devices? That's the topic for today because this question comes up pretty frequently, especially from new to Linux users, novice Linux users, especially those of you that are running Ubuntu because Ubuntu out of the box now ships a lot of programs as snap packages already installed as snap packages. And when you run your standard list block command, LSBLK, you have all of these loop devices that are listed among your block devices. What are those loop devices? Well, let's start with what a standard block device is. That's typically a hard drive or a solid state drive or an optical drive, like a DVD drive, Blu-ray drive, right? And then these loop devices, they're essentially pseudo devices. They're not really devices, they're virtual devices. You can think of it as a virtual device that allows you to mount a virtual file system. Essentially, a loop device is a file that can be mounted as a quasi block device. So uh, a, a good example of this would be an ISO file. An ISO, you typically you'll mount an ISO and you can mount that thing as a device essentially, but really it's just a file. An ISO, all it is is an image file. And that's also what's going on with snap packages in Ubuntu, right? These snap packages, these are files, right? They get mounted as devices. They get mounted as a file system, essentially a virtual file system. So let me switch over to my desktop here and I'm gonna go ahead and launch a terminal and just to show you guys what most people complain about with this loopback device problem. It's not really a problem. When I run an LSBLK, I have a lot of snaps installed on my computer here. Well, not a lot, but I've got, I don't know, two dozen or so snap packages and they're all mounted as loop devices, right? And these are the loops and it actually specifies in the LSBLK command, what is a loop device? And then down here, of course, these are the actual block devices. So these are legitimate drives. So I've got a bunch of SSD drives. I got an NVMe drive. You can see I've got some partitions created on two of the drives. Those are partitions that are currently mounted. You can see on my computer, I've got, of course, the root partition. I also have a separate uh, partition for my music directory because it's very large. I have that on its own disk mounted as its own separate partition. I actually did a video about that, how you can actually uh, put a, like your home folder or music folder or video folder on its own separate drive and then mount that thing. I'll uh, link to that video in the show description in case you guys want to check that out. If I had any optical drives, they would also be listed here. I did fire up a virtual machine here. So uh, this is a virtual machine of Ubuntu just running off an ISO. So if I do control alt T in this VM and zoom in here and I run LSBLK, um, I may have to zoom back out a little bit. You can see running the live ISO here, there's not much here. There's really uh, no, you don't see any hard drives, right? Because all of this is running off the CD-ROM, right? That's the CD-ROM drive, it's mounted. And then we have this read-only file system mounted as a loop. And that read-only file system, of course, it's gonna be the ISO. And then we have all these snaps that are also part of the live environment that's already installed, and they are all mounted as loop devices. Now, one of the complaints that people make with snaps being mounted as loop devices is if you have a lot of snaps installed, you've got a lot of output in this LSBLK command. And a lot of people claim that, you know, snaps pollute the output in LSBLK because it's, you know, there's so much stuff in the output and they only want to see their physical drives, right? Their physical block devices. They don't want to see any of the loops. Well, this is rather easy to accomplish because honestly, there is a flag you can use. You can do LSBLK-E7 and it will remove all the loop devices and only return your legitimate block devices. And there's also a command you could run if you want to just list your loop devices. There's actually a command um, most desktop users are never going to run, but it's a uh, LO setup, so that's a loop setup, and if you do a loop setup space dash L for list, I believe, yeah, that will list all the loop devices. I'm zoomed way in, so the output from that looks a little weird. Let me run that again. Let me zoom out. There we go. So that is LO setup dash L for list. You could also do LO setup dash A for all, um, and it gives you a little bit different format, but it gives you a similar list of information. Uh, they're not sorted in any kind of like numerical or alphabetic way. So I like to typically run that command with sort, pipe that into sort. That way you kind of get them at least numerically sorted. 
Now, I don't think I've ever created my own loop device, but if you wanted to, it's rather easy to do. The first thing you need to do is find a loop device that's not in use, and you could do lo setup uh, dash f for find, and if you do it with no other arguments, what this will do, this will find the first unused loop. So in the output from the uh, lo setup dash a, you can see loop 17 is not here, right? We went 15, 16, 17 is not here, 18, 19. So the first unused loop that I could use for a new loop device would be loop 17. So let's go ahead and, and create a loop. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first thing, we're going to have to mount a file to the loop, right? Because again, these loop devices, they're essentially files that are mounted. So I'm going to make a directory. I'll call this make uh, dear test loop will be the name of the directory. And then I'm going to touch a file. I'm going to touch test loop. And I'll call this my loop will be the name of the file. Now the byte size for this new file I just created, of course it's going to be zero bytes because it's an empty file, but you can't mount something, right, as uh, unless you give it a specific size. It's got to have, you know, a, a block size, right? So what I could do is I could use this f allocate command. What this does is allocates a specific amount of space to a file, and I could do dash l. I could make the size anything. I could make it 10 gigs. I've got space on the drive for this, so I'll make this a 10 gig uh, file here. And then what I'm going to do is test loop slash my loop. And then with sudo privileges, because anytime uh, you create a uh, loop device or delete a loop device, you need sudo privileges. So I'm going to do sudo lo setup and what was the first unused loop? It was uh, slash dev slash loop 17. And then we need the uh, file that we're going to use. And of course, that is test loop slash my loop. Then it's going to ask for my sudo password. And if I did that correctly, if I did it lsblk, we should now see loop 17 listed. Yes, and there is loop 17. And you can see the mount point is empty because it is not mounted. You see all the snap packages, they are mounted. If they weren't mounted, you actually couldn't launch these snaps. So if I did a U-mount for unmount and I unmounted one of these uh, loops for the snaps, I actually could not use that program anymore. Now what I could have done for this new loop device, I mean, I could mount it. I'd have to make a file system, you know, like... If you've ever run through a standard like Arch Linux installation or Gentoo installation, anything where you've had to manually create a file system, of course, you've got the mkfs command, right? Make file system dot and then whatever file system you're creating. So I could do, you know, extend four for the file system. I could do slash dev slash loop. 17 if I wanted to go ahead and create that file system I'm not going to do that though because this would it's not something I plan on keeping but after making the file system then of course you know I'd mount slash dev slash loop 17 and of course I would have to mount that to a specific spot you know I'd have to create a directory or I could mount it to temp or whatever it is. Of course, that's assuming I only am using this temporarily. If I wanted to make this a, a permanent, uh, like a mount point, obviously then you would go into your file system table. Uh, this, I, I wasn't actually planning on going over most of this. I really was just gonna explain what these loop devices are for your snaps, but you know, I could go into the file system table and I could, you know, add the, the mount point for this new loop device. And then on a reboot, it should permanently always be mounted. Now, I didn't actually add anything to any of that, but had I gone through that just for sake of completeness, then, you know, if I later wanted to delete this new uh, loop device and mount point, what I would do is I would do a sudo lo setup dash d for delete and delete slash dev slash loop 17, and it would destroy that uh, that loop. As a matter of fact, I do need to do that. And now when I do lsblk, I should no longer see loop 17 in the output. But I diverged quite a bit from what I originally wanted to talk about. So these loop devices that you're seeing for the snap packages, they're essentially, it's a file that is mounted. Uh, you can think of it as a virtual file system and these snaps have to be mounted. If they weren't mounted, you couldn't run the program. So if I did a U-mount, for example, and I uh, unmounted one of the loops, you know, pick one, I, I don't know. The LibreOffice one right here, you know, if I unmounted, slash dev slash loop 11, right? I would no longer be able to 
run LibreOffice until, of course, I mount that back. And of course, some people are going to ask the question, you know, why would Ubuntu uh, choose to mount these things as loop devices, these snaps? What's, what's the benefit of that? And one of the benefits, actually, of using these loop devices is that you can use your loop device as a way to sandbox applications. So they contain all the necessary dependencies and they are sandboxed from the rest of the system. That's why they do these things as loop devices. It has a, like a real world benefit. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course I'm talking about Brian, Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Why You Bald, Homie, Alex, Harmer, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Ringry, Dayoka, George, Lee, Marstrom, Nate, Erion, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Orson, Vador, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick little chat about loop devices would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. And also, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year.